What is going on guys? It is Wyatt and before we jump into today's video, I just want to give a huge shout out to Astro Pneumatic Tool Company or Astro Tools for short. They reached out to me and wanted to send me some tools to help with the C10 race truck project and also the day-to-day -day operations here at the shop. And I have a couple of those tools in front of me. I want to show you guys those really quickly. So here are a few of the tools that they have sent me. Uh, I did not pay for these. I just want to make that clear, but I do want to give my honest opinion on them. I freaking love these tools so far. I have been using these for about a week and a half now. And honestly, especially for the price, these are freaking great. Now I have used these tools before over at Kyle's, the Boosted Boys place, and I'd really like them. So when Astro Tools had reached out to me about doing a sponsorship kind of deal, uh, I jumped on it. I absolutely love their product and I stand behind them 100%. So real quickly on the left here, we have a couple of their lights. Um, I am hardcore, a old Streamlight kind of guy. I love my old Streamlight, but it is kind of cumbersome. Whereas these things have awesome magnets. You can just stick them wherever the heck you want them. They are super bright with a long battery life. So been using these guys a ton, absolutely love them. What's kind of cool too, is I got this little flashlight in the end of the tip. So if you need to get in a tight little spot to see something pretty useful there. Uh, this big floodlight also use this a ton. Super bright has three different stages of brightness. So low, medium and high. Uh, really nice and light so you can just stick it kind of wherever you want it and it's out of your way while you're working Moving on from there. We have a couple of air tools um, This one here on the left is a sawzall. I have not used this guy yet But I will tell you this thing is freaking stout. It has got some heft to it Seems really well built and look forward to using that on some of the cab work uh, the body work there so should come in handy Next to that, we have a air belt sander. I have used this guy quite a bit and I love this thing. It destroys metal. Like if you really lay into this thing, it will hog some metal away. So really cool tool, been using the heck out of that lately, as well as some die grinders. They sent me a straight and a 90 degree angle one, as well as a set of their carbide burrs. And I've been using these a ton on the project already. Freaking love them, really well built. I uh, usually just buy super cheap Harbor Freight ones, but they always seem to break. Uh, these seem a lot more stout and I am curious to see how long they last because I do like them so far. Next to those, we have their little impact gun. Uh, this guy here is not even the smallest one they make. This is their half inch nano one. Uh, been using it quite a bit, really like it. I love how small and light it is. I have fairly big hands, uh, but this thing is so small that it almost fits in the palm of my hand. Uh, which is really neat considering my old impact gun was freaking huge and heavy and cumbersome so really like this guy been using it a lot and curious to see how well that lasts uh, moving on from there we have a set of their hose clamp pliers so these guys are really handy for hard to get to hose clamps like on the duramaxes i commonly work on the lower radiator hose uh, hose clamps a pain in the ass to get to so these allow you to just kind of slide this up there, hook onto the clamp, and then squeeze your pliers and allow you to remove them super easy. So really liking those so far as well. They also sent me a couple of test lights. Uh, this one here is your conventional test light. What's nice, it has a little LED screen on it so that you can see the voltage, which is pretty handy, as well as this little guy here, which does not require a ground lead. It's actually kind of cool how this guy works. Um, kind of difficult to do since I don't have many hands here, uh, but I'll show you guys how this works. So got a battery sitting here. The only thing you have to do with this is hold on to the metal casing, put it on your lead, and then your other hand needs to touch the ground. And then it's got a light and an audible warning. But what's nice is you don't have to hook up a ground lead to it. So kind of cool there. Um, also sent over a rib nut setup. So if you guys don't know what this is, this is like the easiest way to add a threaded insert to pretty much anything. You just drill a hole, insert your little uh, rivna insert deal, use their gun, crimp it in place, and then you now have a threaded insert. So super nice. Uh, they also went ahead and sent over a couple other tools. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that. If you guys wanna see more of those, I will put a link down in the description below to download their catalog. So if you guys are looking for some tools, make sure to click on that. It'll take you right to the download and you can see everything that they have to offer. So that being said, let's go ahead, jump into today's video. And again, a huge thank you to Astro Tools for hooking it up. What's going on guys? It is Wyatt and today we're back in the shop working on the C10 race truck. Uh, I haven't filmed a whole lot, but we have made some good progress on the thing uh, with the whole coronavirus bullshit going on and you know, work and all that. It's been kind of hectic around here. So I've been trying to get some work done and you know, filming it does take quite a long time. 
But I'm gonna catch you guys up on all that real quick uh, right after this intro. Y'all want some fucking cheeseburgers? <laughs> So the last couple nights after getting customer trucks out, I've been plugging away at the C10 race truck project. Uh, so real quick, just to catch you up, uh, there are a couple new bars back here that weren't here in the last video. And the major new bar is this guy down here. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about building a wishbone for this truck, and that is exactly what this is. So this guy's sole purpose is to keep the rear axle centered, and how it accomplishes that is just by having two mounts up here on kind of the frame of the truck, and then one mount back on the axle. So it's going to get beefed up a little bit more. The uh, rear axle bar needs some extra supports that are going to go from the axle down to the bar there. And then I need to finish out welding all this stuff. Uh, but for the most part, it works really good. I can rock the rear axle back and forth and it grabs and moves the whole frame. Uh, so it's nice and stiff and it's not gonna allow the axle to shift side to side whatsoever, which is really nice. Um, this wishbone was actually kind of a real pain in the ass to build. Uh, for you guys that don't know how a wishbone actually works, it's fairly simple. It's pretty much just the two mounts up front and the one in the back. Uh, the only complicated part is actually back here where there is a slider bar. So this bar right here actually slides in and out of this other bar. And by doing so, it allows the axle, the ability to go up and down uh, without binding up. So this will actually slide in there. This inner bar goes pretty much all the way up to the T at the top, and that keeps it from being able to move, but the slide allows the travel in the suspension to move freely and not bind up per se. In general, the whole wishbone setup really isn't that picky about how it's mounted. You can do it on top or underneath the axle. Uh, you can even flip it around and have the two joints back here and the one up on the chassis. Uh, but after watching some of Firepunk Diesel's videos, since this is their four link kit, I was just kind of browsing what they had to say about it. And I guess they actually ran into a problem on theirs where on one of the trucks they did, they had the two mounts on the axle and the one up on the frame. And when you went to add rear steer into the axle, it would actually bind up or you would have to adjust the wishbone as well. Uh, so that's why I chose to go ahead and spin it around. That way, if we go ahead and put any rear steer into the axle, it'll kind of just pivot on that middle point on the axle itself uh, and not cause it to bind up or readjustment every time you put a little bit of rear steer in it. So that is the majority of what we have gotten done over the past couple nights. As far as the rest of this video goes, we need to finish welding out all of the stuff on the axle. So our four link brackets all need welded out yet. Uh, they're just tacked on there. So we're gonna go ahead and heat up the axle tubes and then MIG weld those guys on there. I was also just talking to my buddy, Nick Eggers from PTS Fab down in Texas. And he reminded me that I need to stiffen up the four link brackets. So big thanks to him. We've been talking a little bit about some other things to do with this. Uh, but I am going to be stiffening these up as well. So I'm gonna be welding a kind of a spacer uh, tube in between this bracket to keep it from flexing. These are quarter inch brackets, but they're still gonna flex under high loads. So we're gonna be taking a piece of inch and a quarter and going between these two brackets, welding them there. We're also gonna be putting a plate on the back side of these brackets and then probably taking a tube from somewhere here on the bracket and then coming down here to this lower bar or up here uh, just to keep these from being able to shift side to side. So that's also something we're gonna try to get done in this video. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the time-lapse. All right, so one more quick comment before we jump into the time-lapse. So last night I was sitting around the truck and pondering exactly how I want to beef everything up. Uh, without adding too many unnecessary bars and making it look kind of goofy. So I hopped back here on Blender and kind of messed with this a little bit more. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but you can see underneath the chassis here, we have gone ahead and added uh, two little gussets that are gonna go from our X brace here on the lower bar back into our main frame rail. And then we're also gonna put a 45 degree gusset on the kind of upper and down, or the up and down frame rail here that go into our actual frame rails. Uh, so we're going to take and put this 45 in right here and then add in our X braces underneath. Uh, so that should tie in all of the stuff on the bottom pretty well. And then up top, I'm still kind of undecided what I want to do. 
I know for sure we're going to be putting this X brace in the back half of the chassis and then also doing some little gussets up front to help the top sides of the four link brackets uh, with not being able to pull back too far. Uh, and then as far as the rest of the cage, uh, we're going to be running these down bars, some X bars, and then some forward bars that tie into our cage at some point here. Uh, but that's all likely to change as we get further on the truck. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. But as far as this lower section of the frame in the back half, that is the plan so far. So we're going to go ahead and actually remove the cab from the truck so that we can finish weld some other stuff as well as just give us some more room to build this lower X brace. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And now we're going to jump into the time lapse and get some stuff done on this thing. So you guys just saw we went ahead and pulled the rear axle out more on that in a second as far as the chassis goes we're making really good progress we got this x bar all fabbed up and it's looking really good uh, i also went ahead and started working on these gussets to help gusset this lower four link bar uh, and keep these guys from being able to move so we got this little gusset here we got the x brace in and then we also got these guys done so these are going to kind of set right in there and then just really make this whole corner super rigid so that uh, when we launch the truck, all the force going into this four link bracket isn't going to go into deflection. It should transfer straight into the chassis and be really strong right there. So uh, with that out of the way, it is time to start on the rear X brace. Uh, pretty much going to be doing the same as this one here. It's going to be mounted just a little bit inwards on this bar and then have a gusset that goes back to the main frame rail. So on this back bar, our x brace is going to come in right about here and then go back into that corner there and then we're just going to have a little uh 45 kind of gusset between those two bars to help strengthen that up uh, so we're going to go ahead and work on that i also went ahead and got the rear coil bar uh, cleaned up and measured exactly where i want it and that's why i had to leave the axle in there for just a second to measure all that so what we're doing right now is getting everything back here squared uh, it did shift a little bit with all of the welding and whatnot. So right now I've got some string lines set up with plumb bobs and we're going to be getting these axle tubes completely square with the rest of the frame rail. And then we will start with getting our uh, coil bar here mounted or at least tacked in place. And then we'll start working on our X braces and then that'll keep the entire rear section of the truck in place and not allow it to move anymore. So that is where we're at, a uh, bunch of work just in doing that. So let's go ahead and jump back into another time lapse and get started on that.
So we are cruising right along, making pretty good progress. Uh, went ahead and started welding in all of this X-brace back here. I uh, went ahead and got the chassis squared up, as you guys saw earlier with the plumb bobs and the straight lines and everything. So it's looking really good. I'm waiting to weld the underneath of all of this and this front X member until I pull the engine back out and am able to lift it up uh, so that we can get into a nice position to weld all that stuff. We also have a couple more little gussets that I need to build. Um, I showed you guys these ones just a minute ago where these are gonna come up under here. So we need to get those welded in, but I need to weld this other piece first so we can still get to it. And then we're gonna be building a set of these that kind of go right in here somewhere as well. So as you guys just saw, we got the rear four link brackets welded onto the axle tubes. Uh, to be honest, I'm not much of a MIG welder, even though a lot of people say MIG welding is easier. I find it more challenging than TIG is, uh, probably just because I don't practice with it that often. But we did MIG weld the four link brackets to the axle. As you saw, we heated everything up with the rosebud torch, uh, got everything up to about four or 500 degrees uh, so that the welder wouldn't have to put as much heat in to get a good penetration uh, into the metal. So. Those are all done. I did smack them with a very big hammer and they didn't break off. So I'm assuming that is a good sign. Uh, but yeah, got all that done. Also did some extra work on the lower connecting bar that our wishbone connects to. And then I went ahead and slapped everything back under the chassis. So this is kind of what it looks like right now. And I am freaking in love, like kind of at a loss for words. You know, this is tons of work that's finally coming together to look like something. If you guys haven't ever built anything like this or you know spent a lot of time working on something just the sense of accomplishment even though it's not done is pretty crazy so i'm really happy with how it's turned out so far there's definitely still some stuff that i need to do on the back here um, you know just some finished welding stuff and a couple more little brackets and gussets in places but it's looking really cool uh, we also got a special delivery from the fedex guy today and that is our qa1 double adjustable shocks these are for coilovers. Now, obviously I don't have the coils yet. I'm holding off on buying coils until the truck is mostly done so that we can corner balance it and we are able to get the right spring rate for each corner of the truck so that we can make it ride better, launch better, the whole nine yards. So for now, I am just using these so that I can get everything tacked up in place, make sure that I have enough room for the actual coils to sit in here, which it looks like we're gonna have plenty. Um, and yeah, just kind of one more piece to the puzzle and gosh dang it looks so cool so 
that is kind of where we're at with the truck right now. Anyways, that is enough of me rambling on about the C10 race truck for one video. Before we get out of here though, I want to let you guys know I have launched my own website. It's simple. It is sketchyda.com. Right now, there's not a whole lot on there, but I do plan to add more to it in the future. Uh, for right now, I do want to let you guys know that I have some stickers up for sale. These are for my business, Wits Diesel Service. That is the small business that I do run. Um, right now, the stickers are for sale. They are $7, including free shipping to anywhere in the lower 48. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, I do not offer international shipping. Uh, it will be done later. I just haven't gotten around to setting all of that up quite yet. So if you guys are interested in those stickers, make sure to go check it out. All of the proceeds from those are going to go right into the truck uh, because of this whole COVID-19 shit. Uh, business has slowed down a little bit. So any money from those will be helping out to fund the race truck project. So if you guys are interested in those, head over to sketchyda.com and I'll get those shipped out to you ASAP. With that being said, I am going to get out of here for tonight. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys and I will see you in the next video. Peace.